Hi, and welcome to the MyConsultant.ca show. I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. And I'm Adrian Quijano. And we're here to help you with the Canadian immigration process. This show is designed to be a brief way to inform you on Canadian immigration news headlines, immigration policy and program concepts, and introduce you to industry experts. The province of British Columbia is responding to the crucial need for more healthcare workers and early childhood educators, or ECEs. Changes will be implemented for the BC PNP skills immigration stream, and they are to prioritize these occupations and increase support for the care community. The Government of Canada is working hard to resettle over 40,000 Afghan nationals as quickly and safely as possible. Canada has now welcomed over 8,600 refugees as of March 11th, 2022. And to help Afghan women newcomers, many organizations and institutions in the country are offering valuable career opportunities which include the School of Journalism and Communication at Carleton University and the Calgary Catholic Immigration Society. Canada recognizes that resettlement can be particularly difficult for women and girls. So these programs are in place to help them enter their new lives. That's a really interesting thing that the government is doing and something again that I, I wouldn't have thought about even as a woman, but as a woman living in Canada, that's really important. Right, yeah. I think it's great that the Canadian government is recognizing that it is particularly hard for uh, women and girls to start new lives, especially in a new country with possibly new languages. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And education is a great way to get a good job and contribute to the economy and just not just you know survive here, but thrive here, so. That's right. Great. On March 8th, 2022, IRCC Minister Sean Fraser appointed five new members to the College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants Board of Directors. Each has a two year term beginning March 7th. Members include Ben Rempel, former Assistant Deputy Minister of Immigration, Manitoba, Jennifer Henry, Senior Program Development and Strategy Lead for the United Church of Canada. Norman Beaudry, Director of International Recruitment at the Université Laval and Treasurer and Member of Caldo Consortium, and Timothy D'Souza, Senior Vice President of Finance and Business Operations for the Diabetes Association of Canada, and Nicholas Summers, former Provincial Director and CEO for the Newfoundland and Labrador Legal Aid Commission. The College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants, or CICC, is the official regulator for immigration and citizenship consultants nationwide and is a participant along with the IRCC in Fraud Prevention Month. Can you tell us more about Fraud Prevention Month? Yeah, so March is Fraud Prevention Month, which is a month where the CICC and IRCC focus on informing the public about the ways in which they could become victims of fraud. So this is a particular concern for immigrants because there are unfortunately still many unlicensed immigration consultants working illegally. They promise things they cannot deliver on and exploit people who do not know how to verify their consultant. So the CICC and IRCC have tips and resources on how to look out for this and ways to ensure you hire a licensed professional in good standing under the CICC. So Sarah, what's your segment on this week? Well, considering it's Fraud Prevention Month and we're talking a lot about that, I thought that we could do a little refresher on the CICC because we did touch base on it many months ago. I think it was uh, one of our earlier episodes, but we're going to do a little bit of a refresher so that we have the context for your segment, which is what, by the way, Adrian? It is on uh, anti-fraud prevention tips, directly mm -hmm. also from the IRCC, which is super helpful. And I'm just going to go through a few tips that folks can follow at home uh, in order to help keep them safe during, during the year, but also especially during anti-prevention month. Right. Yeah. Let's go over to Sarah's segment. Before we get into specifics about Fraud Prevention Month, we're going to do a bit of a refresher on the CICC, which is the College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants. We actually did do a segment on the CICC much earlier in the show. I believe it was episode six, 
but because it's very relevant to today's topic, and if there are any new viewers out there, this will help you to understand a little bit better the context of what's going on. So we're going to talk to you about what the CICC is, its purpose, specifics of its purpose, and what they actually do, and what they do not do. Let's get started. First, it's important to know that any Canadian immigration and citizenship consultant in the country or practicing abroad must be licensed and in good standing with the college. So what is the CICC? It is a regulatory body, licensor, and educator for all practicing immigration consultants in Canada. But what is a regulatory college? It is a self-regulatory organization, or SRO, that regulates its own profession in the public's interest. So they are given powers and responsibilities through acts of parliament. Self-regulation is only allotted to professions in which the practitioners have shown that they can put the public interest ahead of their own, for example, healthcare. What is its purpose? Its purpose largely is to serve and protect the public. It is to ensure immigrants looking to make Canada their permanent home are getting honest, legitimate advice that is certified. It is to eliminate more fraud and avoid immigrants losing money to these false practitioners and to uphold and protect immigration consultants in good standing. How does the college do this? Well, specifically by licensing, ongoing education, complaints and discipline, and eventually a compensation fund. For licensing, Every immigration consultant must meet a certain standard of education, competence, and ethics in order to continue to be certified each year. Ongoing education. There are mandatory yearly updates in learning. This is why many consultants may choose to join an association, such as CAPIC, which is the acronym for the Canadian Association of Professional Immigration Consultants. This association has a lot of ways to get the consultants the education that they need. Complaints and discipline. So when there is a complaint, the complaint is investigated and consultants who do not meet the code of professional conduct are punished in some way. Sometimes their uh, licensees are sanctioned. And then there's a compensation fund. The federal government will help create the fund for those who have been victims of fraud or who have had a negative experience because of a licensee. You'll be able to make a claim in the near future in order to get some of that money that you have lost. This is not running yet, but it is a future goal. It is important to note what the college does not do. They do not provide immigration advice. They do not process immigration applications and they do not influence decisions related to immigration. The creation of the CICC was a huge feat for immigration consultants and for immigrants coming into the country. It is great to know that the government of Canada takes seriously fraud, especially in the immigration sector, because it does exist still today. So now let's turn to Adrian to find out how we can combat that fraud and be aware of it. Hello and welcome to the anti-fraud segment. Today we'll be talking about tips to avoid fraud directly provided by the IRCC. So fraud, what happens usually? Usually a person poses as a government official on the telephone. They call people and try to scare them by saying that they have done something wrong, like not filing the proper paperwork and that they owe fees. They may say that the person can lose their immigration status or be deported if they do not pay right away. These people may also threaten someone's family or home. The types of fraud include marriage fraud, adoption fraud, documentation fraud, and phone scams, which are the most common types of fraud that we see in Canada today. Some things to remember are the Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship of Canada Department, or the IRCC, will never contact you over the phone to collect fees or fines, be aggressive or threaten to arrest or deport you, threaten to harm you or a family member or damage your home and property, ask for your personal information over the phone, except to verify information you had already given the IRCC, ask for financial information over the phone, try to rush you into paying right away, 
ask you to pay fees using prepaid credit cards, Western Union, MoneyGram, gift cards, or any other similar services, or send police to arrest you for unpaid fees. If you get a suspicious immigration call, you should ask for the name of the person calling and then hang up, call the IRCC call center to confirm that the call was real, and if the call wasn't real, report it to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center. If you have lost money to a scam artist, report it to your local police service. And finally, go over to the IRCC website to look at the different types of fraud and more tips on how you can avoid them. Now over to Sarah for our show wrap up. So Adrian, thank you for that really helpful segment. And uh, I'm wondering what, what stood out to you the most from your research? Was anything that surprised you or? I think that the thing that surprised me the most was all of the different types of fraud that are specifically targeted towards immigrants. But the one that was the most surprising was adoption fraud. Um, yeah. yeah. If you've never heard of it or aren't aware of it, essentially, I would have gone over it uh, earlier. However, it, essentially, adoption fraud makes uh, folks go into an adoption process without actually going into an adoption process. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is um, insane. <laughs> yeah. And essentially these folks take advantage of the fact that inter-country adoptions are extremely complex mm. and follow different laws from provincial to the government of Canada and then also the country of adoption. So mm. it just makes use of all this, you know, legal jargon and confuses folks into giving them their personal information, which is extremely predatory. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I, I'm surprised too at how much there is to look out for as an immigrant. I mean, it, it's very annoying, even as a Canadian citizen, you know, the amount of spam calls we get in a day and oh, they're yeah. getting so creative with the texts, you know, like really are. Yeah. banking information and, you know, the CRA and all this stuff. It, it's not even, I, I read somewhere that these kinds of the, um, the fraud that comes from this, it, it's, you don't, you're not more susceptible because of your level of intelligence well, or any specific demographic. Everybody yeah. is susceptible and everybody falls for fraud sometimes. So it really right. is just about getting informed. For sure. Yeah. Uh, just a, a quick aside from, uh, as an example, my Lola, who is my grandma, okay. she is about 80 years old. Mm -hmm. She gets, she gets these spam calls all the time and thankfully she knows, yeah. but she didn't know the first time. And she got a call from the CRA to mm -hmm. say that she had some information that was uh, needed to be verified. So uh, she called me and asked me if this was real. That's good. I said, no, <laughs> uh, do not call them back. Don't, don't email them or anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really good that she called you. It's, yeah. it's very unfortunate, but um, it's great that the government is paying attention to this kind of fraud. And just so all the viewers are aware, the myconsultant.ca show is based on myconsultant.ca, which is a trusted web page that has lots of licensed, only licensed um, consultants, immigration and citizenship consultants. So if you go to myconsultant.ca, you can find a whole range of consultants who specialize in different types of uh, applications, who speak different languages. If in English is not your first language and you, you want to speak to somebody who knows Arabic or you know Mandarin, they're they're there. So definitely check them out and you're in good hands with those consultants. For more information about the topics we cover on this show, please visit myconsultant.ca where you can explore up-to-date news on important issues, read in-depth articles explaining immigration and citizenship, and seek answers to your most pressing questions from a vibrant community of authorized immigration and citizenship consultants. Also, be sure to click the bell icon for notifications from this channel, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Adrian Quijano. And I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.